Hello everyone, I'm Amar Central and welcome to Down Under. We are back in Manly um, Act 3, I believe, Down Under in Australia with this vehicle from the iconic Lovian fleet. Lovian, based in Edinburgh um, and sort of Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland, still run by the council, is a very, very iconic bus company, always being innovative with new vehicles, new designs, new concepts and that sort of thing. And in front of us is the latest one. Although in, uh, although in the game we are limited to sort of how realistic we can make these things, um, and in real life these are BYD E400 EVs, in the game um, the talented ScotRail 605 has used the Studio Polygon E400 MMC to recreate the brand new batch of four, number 291, 292, 3 and 4, that are based on Route 10 um, in Edinburgh into the game on the sort of standard ADL E400 chassis on a 10.9 metre variant. So we are in Manly and I bet you're wondering, it's a little bit strange me driving a UK livered bus, a UK bus in Manly, in Australia. However, Lovian does link in to Australia, into current affairs going on over there at the moment. So what we're going to do is we are going to start the bus up. I will tell you what is going on and why I've chosen this repeat, why I've chosen the map as well, and why I've chosen the forest route as well, as that does also sort of link um, into this video. So we're going to be taking a spin on Route 271, a route I've never driven. I've never driven any forest routes at all on this map that runs between here, Ooh, that is... September 15th, 2019. There we go, that runs between Narrabung Way all the way up to Forest Way Shops. It's a route that takes just over 20 minutes in length. So we'll get our blind set up. I know it wanted its certain cord on, so I don't know. Oh, that's not that nice. I was hoping for a little bit of a better font than that, but hey ho. Um, at least it, at least the number does fit on. It could be a lot worse. Um, although I'm still not too happy with how the destinations come out. So let's bob this in. There we go. You see, I don't drive this bus as much. I usually drive like the Gemini 3 of the street deck. Thus, why I don't know the logging code as of yet. So, one thing that will be really interesting to test in this video is how well this bus performs at hill starts. The Studio Polygon um, vehicles, their sort of products, are usually really, really good at performing on hills i.e. no matter how steep a hill is, they will still in some shape or form manage to get up it um, as long as it isn't unrealistically steep that will be the test in this video. So it's coming up with some betchy fung errors on me today, I don't quite know why, don't ask me why. I am hoping that we are going to be picking up some people. For some reason, my OMSI 2 has been playing up relatively recently. Don't ask me why, I don't clue. Um, it might be because we're on a big map today and we're on quite a high poly vehicle, but it doesn't want to skip the time forwards. Um, so that may mean there might not be many people waiting at the bus stops in this video. That will be a shame, but it will give us opportunity to explore this bus route. Um, and I can talk to you about the buses and the liveries. So the BYD E400 EV is expanding as a popular product in the UK. Some companies are still purchasing Scania variants of the E400, some are still purchasing the ADL variant. However, the one that does seem to be incredibly popular at the moment is the um, EV um, BYD. And I've just realised as well, we're using driverless mirrors on this. <laughs> I didn't, and it's taken me that long to realise that they've updated the Studio Polygon E400 to include driverless mirrors. Wow. Hey, how are you? Oh, we've got people waiting, brilliant. I hadn't even noticed. Oh my goodness me, it's got driverless mirrors. <gasps> okay, this, is, this video is getting cool by the minute, folks. It really is. I don't even need to. I don't even need to turn my turn my camera view. That is amazing. I didn't even see them. You see, I just didn't even clock them. 
Um, for those of you who want to see driverless mirrors um, sort of like explained in the sort of on real life vehicles, I did a video a few months ago when I visited Reliance Motor Services um, up in Sutton, North York. Um, I did an operations overview and took a little look around their mirrorless E200 MMC, their X demo vehicle. Um, had a little sit in the cab um, and had a little experiment with how the driverless mirrors work on it. I'll be doing a proper in-depth video of that hopefully at some point again in the um, near future. Um, but do go and check it out. I will link it in the description below if you haven't already. So that is really cool. I didn't even notice the driverless mirrors were a thing on this. Wowzers. Um, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite worried at myself there for not realising. Yeah, that is really weird. That is really weird. But the thing is, is with these driverless mirrors, as you can see, the how the camera yeah, is, yeah, it allows you to see more sort of surround. So it means that the blind spot that drivers usually have to contend with, it's a lot less than usual um, on your conventional mirrors. That does come in handy. I mean, there was a few people that have turned around and sort of said, oh, well, what if the wire gets caught? I mean, that was a question that I asked um, upon visiting the mirrorless E200 MMC. Um, and I was told that the issues like that ADL did think of. And other operators will have done the exact same. Um, and the way to combat that problem is to have a backup wire as well, a backup hidden wire that isn't in the same spot as the other one. As obviously, if they were both on the next one another, if one gets cut off, it's more like the one is as well. But if you have one at one end and one at the other, and then, yeah, as I say, one hidden, um, it works out a lot better. I am liking this route as well. It's a very nice route. It reminds me, this hill coming up, as the game loads in, um, this hill coming up reminds me of my trip to the North East. Yeah, well, last year on this, on the, my regular route. Um, the, the X12, when it runs between Stockton and Sedgefield, I believe it is. When it runs between those two locations, it goes up a massive hill. Um, I can't remember what road it's part of. It looks really cool, um, and it does remind me of that. Reminds me, I also need to make a trip to the northeast. Need to go on some more of their scan. You're on the deckers that go northeast have. Because they seem to be getting more in as well. It seems to be quite an unusual operation where they seem to be transferring a lot more in. Um, out of nowhere, <laughs> they just does seem to be really weird. It's coping all right, to be fair. Solid 30 mph up that hill. But anyway, as I was saying at the beginning, there is madness. Um, there is reason behind the madness. <laughs> There's meaning behind the madness, should I say, um, as to why I'm driving a Lovian liveried bus. I'll Part of, sort of love in livery. I mean, it's not in their livery, is it, as such? There we go. Um, I just didn't want to go into the wooden posts. Good day. Hello. So, but there is a reason why I'm driving a Lovian bus, um, a new one as well at that, um, in Australia. And it links to the Blue Mountain Explorer service. Some of you, when I say um, Blue, Mountain, Blue Mountain Explorer, you will know exactly what I mean from the beginning. You will know where this is going now, you'll know what I mean. Some of you won't, um, and for those of you, um, I will explain. So, when Lovian are known for selling their vehicles on when they are quite young, um, they've always had a really modern fleet of buses. Um, it's like, oh goodness. <laughs> the weather changed a little bit. This is the thing when you're on real weather, real life weather, it does like to change a lot. Um, every so often without, without you expecting it. Um, there we go, Bob Lights on. 
But it's like, for example, um, these have come along alongside the um, new B5 TL e Enviro, um, Enviro 400 MMCs, and they have started to replace the B90L buses. So the B90L buses, um, most other operators are still running them, and some companies are still buying them as like new buses to their operations. Meanwhile, Lovian buses having withdrawn their B7TLs a couple of years ago, and um, now withdrawing their B9TLs. Starting off with the 57 regs, um, it's like for sort of a comparison. First, is still um, on their B7TLs. They're still in an ALX 400s, um, a bus that left Lovian fleet many, many years ago on the main front, on the main sort of service front, should I say? It's so weird looking there and there and the being no rivers. I still cannot believe I didn't even notice it till about five minutes in the video. I went, oh yeah, the driver, it's Mivalus. Ah. Um, that is so cool. I didn't even know they'd done an update for that. I wasn't even aware of it. Um, unfortunately, over the past few days, including the day that this video is going up, um, I'm not fully well. Um, I'm, I'm unfortunately rather ill. Um, that's meant that I've not. That that's why um, over the past sort of week or so, the video content hasn't been as good as it usually is. Um, I've been trying to continue with quite a limited skeleton timetable on videos. Um, I.e., I've been uploading quite a lot of pre-recorded stuff. Um, thus why videos haven't been released as much. Um, it's also affected Talking Buses X on the Patreon. That for those of you who watched Patreon, I did provide a a sort of alternative video on the day um, to cover it, as obviously that's what you guys, you guys sort of contribute extra for the um, exclusive content. So I gave you guys an exclusive OMSI 2 video that was going to go on the main channel, um, but instead has gone to the Patreons only. Um, Talking Bosses Extra will be resuming very soon, um, just as and when I'm well again to do it. So I'm hoping this week to have Talking Bosses running again. Hopefully I'm feeling a bit better to do it. Um, as I say, I'm still not 100% unfortunately. Um, I know the roof probably hit that traffic light. That's because in Australia they don't really use that many double-decker buses. Oh, yeah. But anyway, back onto the Blue Mountain Explorer. That was an interesting um, diverge round. Um, and as I was saying, um, Lovian withdraw their buses quite new. They withdrew their B7s earlier on. We sort of like play groups like first groups to run an ALX 400 B7 Gemini's in the main fleets at the moment. Um, Lovian withdrew their B7 Gemini's a few years ago. I've now started withdrawing their B9 um, TL Gemini 1s and I've even started to withdraw the odd couple of Gemini 2s um, that are that are just over 10 years old. So that has been a theme that they've had for many years now and a group of vehicles that also saw that were the Step Entrance Olympians both on their, um, I believe it was Oh, what were their body work? Um, I am actually... Is that... That hasn't got a chance of fitting under that light. So I'm just going to... For the purposes of the fact I've just shown you all it. Um, I, I'm just going to go around it. There we go. But they had their... Um, sort of the Volvo Olympians, including the ones on the iconic Royale chassis. Not many operators bought um, Olympians on the Royale chassis. Um, first group was one of them, um, primarily First West Yorkshire, with a few orders diverted from them. Um, then operations such as Lovian did, Airlink purchased a few, and there was the odd other operator here and there. So Lovian withdrew theirs um, around the 2010s, and a lot of them got sold on to other operators, um, as well as going overseas. And one place they ended up overseas was all the way on the other side of the world in Australia. Where Blue Mountain Explorer, I believe, bought about five or six examples that have been in use um, until um, this year. 
and bought them four services on their Blue Mountain Explorer, using them as iconic Lovian buses. As they are iconic, they were the iconic Scottish buses, including the iconic Lovian seating, and were reliable motors as well, from the PPCX batch of vehicles. Hey, mate. A batch that um, I'm quite disappointed to say I'm yet to actually sample. So they were operating in service up until last week. And I mean last week. So if you'd have gone two weeks ago, they were running. Um, they were they were running some services. They were sort of, um, I believe they were running some contracts and things. And they were still running um, two weeks ago. But last week, it was announced on their social media and in the local um, Australian, sort of the local Australian newspaper around there, that the operation was shutting with the um, operation providers um, as it, it's run by a different entity closing the company in order to try and save other assets of the business. As I say, it was a, it was a very, very sad closure. Um, it does mean that those iconic um, Royal bodied Royal Olympians no longer run there. Um, it, it is very disappointing um, that they managed to get all the way around there, all the way around the world, and the operation has had to close due to COVID. It's quite a popular operation as well, um, from what I was looking at over the past few years. So the vehicles themselves are being saved. Um, if you are interested, do go and check out their social media. I believe they were advertising a few for sale on there with offers. Um, obviously, um, if you are in the UK, it would cost quite a lot to ferry them across. Um, however, it isn't impossible. So if that is it, if you're up for a challenge, um, you can do that. And if not as well, um, I believe local preservationists are also snapping them up as well to ensure that the um, the, the aspect, um, the fact that they managed to survive so long in service there is appreciated and known. Oh wowzers, that's uh, all 505. And we're here at the terminus. There we go. Forest 04, 05. I'm just going to have a little look at this as it actually looks quite cool. It really does. That livery really suits us. And the love on these, how it's got the single scroller. There we go. Look at that. Single sort of scroller blind instead of the other ones that have the separate rollers. I feel like that looks a lot better. Loving the tinted windows on this. Scott Rail 605, if you are watching, um, hello. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, this is absolutely super refins. Um, hats off to you. Especially with how quick it was made. From the fact that the buses haven't been out that long, to be able to get the reference shots, get the, get the repaint made like this in such a short period of time is pretty cool. So I'm just going to go and move round to the layover point now. I don't know why they were in the bus only. I'm going to go down here as this is where it ad advises me to go for my layover. But with the Blue Mountain Explorers um, sort of royales no longer in service, it isn't it isn't the be all and end all for oh there we go there we go um, for sort of UK buses UK step entrance buses being operated around the world um, having been exported. There's still many to find around the world. At some point I will be doing some research and I may bring you all a comprehensive video um, just to give you an idea of what's where. Obviously it won't be fully accurate as we don't all know what is where. There's some stuff that's been hidden for a very, very long time. Um, however, the stuff that is known, I may do a little bit of a sum up video for you at some point if there is a few of you interested. Just gonna put that in service on the blind, I think.
There we go, that's better. Don't know why it's on the lower level though. <laughs> So as I've said before and we'll say again, this Studio Polygon E400 MMC is an absolutely superb vehicle to drive. Um, it is one I do recommend downloading. Um, it is quite high in polys, um, although to be fair, to say being in Manly Act 3, it's performed very smoothly, so I would assume that some optimization has taken place um, with this new mirrorless update. I still can't get over that this now has a mirrorless variant. Um, I didn't even know that. Um, oh, goodness, the... Oh, oh, the... It's... Do you know when I said that it was working really well? Um, and we didn't have any issues. Oh, my goodness, we got the black screen of death. I've got me, like, me, me driving thing. There we go. Apologies about that, Fox. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything nowadays. You know when I say, oh, it's performing really well. It's going brilliant without a problem. I'm not going to say anything now, I'm just going to wait until the very, very end of the video. When I'm doing the outro and then go, I perform well then. Um, because clearly, clearly it does like to always throw up something. Oh, is it getting us to spin around? Ah, okay, well I do need to bust up the park in though. Really hoping it provisions one round here. Yes, it does. There we go. There's my layover bus stop. That's quite a distance, actually. Reminds me when I'm driving the 12 on London and you drop off at Camberwell Green and you do have about a five or six minute trek around to the depot. Um, it is quite a long run. There we go. Everything on doors open. And that's the end of the 271 bus service on Manly Act 3, part of the forest division on the map. So if you are wanting to recreate this route, make sure you do use the, for the Manly Act 3 forest depot blinds um, as they will come up with the right destinations for this. That's one thing with Manly, sometimes the destination blinds can be relatively confusing um, as there's loads of different destination blinds to use. Um, that can mean you can get a muddled up that safe to say something I've done many times before But it is a lovely route. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed me telling you a little bit about the repaint about the bus um, about the um, Blue Mountain Explorers. It is quite sad. It is quite sad to see the Royal bodied Volvo Olympians going there However, with how iconic they've been and the fact that they've been a tourist item themselves Apart, like aside from the route, they have been their own tourist item, and they are all being preserved now. So hopefully, um, if you do go over to Australia, you go to one of their museums, potentially even the Sydney Bus Museum, and you may be able to get a ride on one within the next year or two. So anyway, I do hope you have all enjoyed this video. If you have done, do be sure to hit the like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you are new to the channel, hello and welcome. For more lively content like this, both from the simulation worlds of OMSI 2, Train Simulator, Roblox and much, much more, as well as the real life bus industry where I basically do this and I go out into the real life bus world reviewing bus brands, routes, and new um, sort of vehicles and things like that and networks. Do be sure to subscribe and join the And More Sensual community as we continue to grow. Do be sure to check out the new Patreon page as well, where the Catch Up Talking Buses Extra show will be released very, very soon, as well as other exclusive content, um, and it acts as another way that you can support the content that you see on this channel to allow me to keep recording it. Again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.